everyone, I am Queen Arielle of the Realm, the Tarpon Springs Mermaid, and I am so sad that I could not be there in person with you today. My younger son got sick, so I am just going to do a video for you about my semi-professional job of mermaiding. So what do I mean by semi-professional? That's a big long word, right? I just mean that I do mermaiding online and I get paid for making videos, but it's not my actual full-time job. My actual full-time job is kids ministry coordinator at Grace City Church. How did I get into being a mermaid? It all started back when I was a little girl. The Little Mermaid came out when I was eight years old and her name was almost the same as my name. And I was like, oh my gosh, she is me. And from that point on, I just always loved mermaids. Every time I went to the beach, I would make myself a sand tail and put like shells on it for scales and absolutely just loved everything about the Little Mermaid and just the ocean and the beach and the mermaid world. Fast forward to when I was a grown up, just last summer, I discovered they actually make mermaid tails that you can buy and monofins that go inside them to help you swim through the water as a real mermaid. I'm going to show you a few of the monofins that I have as well as a few of my tails. And at the end, I'll show you a few of my videos that I've made that I get paid for on social media. My very first monofin was the Fin Fun Pro. This is a really good, starter monofin. They actually make them in a kid size as well. The reason why I love this is because it has just little, almost like socks that you slip onto your feet. So if you need to get this off in the water really quickly, you can just pull one foot out and then kick and it basically just flies right off your legs. This one is also really nice. You see how it has an open end here? So that allows water to flow through so you don't get as much drag, which is really important when you are a new swimmer and you're not really used to swimming as a mer person. So this is the tail that I have that goes with this monofin. As you can see, the bottom is also open and that is how you put your monofin in your tail. Um, you absolutely have to have a monofin in order to swim safely as a mermaid. And actually, I highly recommend that you practice with just a monofin before you stick your legs in a tail because it just kind of gives you a chance to make sure you know the movements and that you can swim safely. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how this goes together. We have our tail and our monofin, and your tail just slips right inside like so. This is another reason why I love this tail for beginners. It is very easy to assemble. It takes, what, like 30 seconds, and you have a beautiful mermaid tail. Do you wanna see it on? The easiest way to put your tail on is to take the top and kind of scrunch it up until you get to where you put your feet in the foot pockets. And then you find your first foot pocket, you just tuck your foot in, just like you're slipping on a pair of socks, and tuck in your second foot, just like you're slipping on your second sock, and then you pull your tail up. Boop, 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 boop. And you're a mermaid! Another reason I really like this tail for beginners, or any tail by Fin Fun for that matter, is because the fluke tips have a little bit of a plastic coating. When you're first learning to swim as a mermaid, you're going to scuff your tail up. They're made of fabric. It's not super strong, especially when it gets wet. So even a semi-professional mermaid, I scratch my tails up all the time, but these little ends will help keep your fluke from getting holes in it. So that is very good if you're a beginning mermaid. Another great beginning monofin is the Mermaid Linden by Body Glove. You can get these on Amazon. And um, I really like this one because it is a little bit more sturdy. It's not made of fabric, it's made of plastic and maybe like a rubber material. So it does have a little bit more of a flex to it in the water. The only thing I don't like are these bulky heel straps, which even when you put your tail on, you can kind of still see them. But if you want a more powerful kick, this is the way to go. I technically don't have any tails that just fit this, I got this one to go in one of my bigger tails, which is another good thing about the Linden. If you graduate into like a mermaid who's been doing it for a really long time and you want to get a bigger tail with a bigger fluke, you can actually tuck this into that bigger tail, which I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, so this is one of my professional tails. You can see the fluke is a lot bigger. You have to be a very, very strong, experienced swimmer in order to propel yourself through the water with this. It does have vinyl inside of it to help the fluke hold its shape. Um, and basically what you do is you sandwich that Lyndon I just showed you in between the vinyl layers and Velcro them shut. So 
you have your propulsion with your monofin, but then your fluke is still nice and big and flowy. As you can see, we've got our monofin here and then my tail so it fits like right inside and then that's what gives you your propulsion and then you just have the extra fluke for basically prettiness. Honestly, as far as monofins go, I really like the linen for swimming without a tail skin. Oftentimes I will wear it with leggings or I have mermaid scale shorts. Um, I've worn this for scalloping out in the ocean before and it just has a really um, nice kick to it and it's really durable compared to some of my other monofins. So I feel like this is a good one for kicking around if you don't want to wear a fabric tail, but you still want to pretend you're a mermaid. And here is my favorite monofin. Her name is Finley. Yes, I did give her a name because um, she is just fabulous. This was my first Mer Taylor monofin that I got. Um, Mer Taylor is a tail maker who actually lives right here in Florida, up in Lakanto. They actually have a mermaid aquarium that you can go um, explore some sea creatures and watch a mermaid show. It's really, really cool. But he makes these himself. He designed the fluke himself. He has silicone molds and he pours the silicone in and lets it harden and uh, sends it to you in the mail. So this is the Fantasy Fin 1 and it has like a really nice design to it. It's very mermaidy, but it's not too heavy. So my first two monofins that I showed you run about one pound. They are very light. They're perfect for be beginners. This is seven to eight pounds. Uh, mine is eight. So it is heavy. It's not as heavy as my biggest fin, but it is heavy. I love this one though, because you see how floppy it is? When you're swimming in the water with this, it looks like you are a real mermaid. So this is something you can work up to. You wanna start off with either a Fin Fun or a Linden, and then Mer Taylor is a really great choice once you've been mermaiding for a while and you are a proficient swimmer. Um, usually teenagers to adults are the ones who use these. So semi-pro to pro mermaids. The reason why I love this too is it is heavy, but it's not too much of a bear to carry around like my really big fluke. Um, I can carry this easily. It's a little bit smaller, so it's easier to move on land. I can actually like flip my tail, whereas my other one, I still don't quite have the strength for it. It is 24 pounds. So so a lot heavier, three times heavier than this baby. So I am going to pop this in one of my tails and I'll show you how it works. This is one of my favorite tails. The reason why I love this one so much is it is crazy realistic. I have had millions of views probably wearing this tail, doing like mermaid caught on camera um, type footage. So it is really, really pretty. I originally got it for like a Halloween tail, but I ended up falling in love with it. Um, this one is a little bit different than my first one that I showed you because the bottom is closed, so you have a side zipper. So you just tuck your monofin in that side zipper, and I am going to show you how I do that because this one is fairly easy to put together. So let's go do that now. So the easiest way to start off is to have your tail laying with your zipper facing you, and you want to take your first side of your fluke and tuck it all the way in to the little pointy on your fabric. And it is a little sticky, so sometimes you have to work with it a little bit. You just kinda wanna gently wiggle in there. The silicone can tear, which is another reason why it's more for people who've had experience with mermaiding, so you do have to be a little bit careful with it. Um, but I've never had any problems. And you can fix it, you can get silicone kits to fix any tears that you might get. But fingers crossed, I won't get any tears. All right, so once you've got that first side in, you're going to take your heels and you're going to tuck those into kind of the body of your tail. And then you're going to take your other side of your fluke. I zip it shut just a little bit and then I go ahead and take that last corner and poke it in to the tip of my tail here. Whoops, it's wrinkled, hold on. Get in there. And then you just zip it up. And you have a very pretty floppy fluke. So putting this one on is basically the same thing as the other one. You kind of want to scrunch it down until you get to where your foot pockets are. With this one, you never ever want to pull on your heel straps because it could tear the silicone. So I just kind of wiggle my toes until my foot is almost in and then I slip the heel strap over the back of my foot. And then you do your other side. Wiggle your toes. And then slip your heel strap over the back of your foot. Make sure there are no wrinkles at the bottom. And pull it up. 
Isn't it so pretty? I love this one. Look how floppy it is. Oh, I'm hitting the wall. <laughs> okay, let's go. These are all of the tails that I have for the Fantasy Fin 1. Like I said, it's my favorite monofin. These tails are a little less expensive than my bigger fluke tails, so it's very easy to get a new one and just kind of change up your look. So let's go ahead and take a peek at them. This is the very first Mertailer Fantasy Fin 1 tail that I've got. It is the Parrot Bay, and I love the tropical pattern and colors on this tail. It looks really beautiful in the water because the pink stands out really nicely. My second tail I got was the Pixie Lagoon. Again, I love this tail. These are like my favorite colors, light pink and purple and turquoise. This one does not show up very good in the water, but it is absolutely beautiful for doing things on land. And I just got this tail. This is the Olive Fly by Mer Taylor. And I got this one for Christmas um, to do like Christmas footage. And also I feel like it kind of has a little mermaid vibe to it. It's very realistic and I cannot wait. I haven't swam in this one yet. I just got it yesterday. So I'm very excited to try it out. My last monofin also has a name. Her name is Reyna, which means queen. I also call her Big Bertha or just Bertha because she is so humongous. This thing weighs 24 pounds and is really hard to carry around, but oh my goodness, does it look pretty in the water and on land. It's really hard to flop it around on land, but in the water it is absolutely beautiful. This is also poured silicone and I love how they got the stripes in it just by pouring the silicone and letting it harden. So I got this one for my birthday. It is my biggest tail. This one is definitely considered a tail for professionals who've been doing this for a while and kind of know what they're doing. Tail skin I got to go with that is one of my favorite favorites. It is the Treasure Coast by Mer Taylor. Again, this has all my favorite colors, but they're a little more vibrant than the Pixie Lagoon. So they actually stand out in the water. And oh my goodness, I took this to the beach this past weekend and it was absolutely mermazing. That was my entire collection of tails. Next, I would like to get into how do you become a mermaid like me? Before you even think about putting on a monofin or a tail, you have to pass the mermaid test. What is the mermaid test? First, you need to be able to swim 50 meters, which is the length of an Olympic sized swimming pool without any help, nice and smooth, proficiently without struggling. Second, you need to be able to tread water for one full minute. Treading water is when you're in the deep end and you're using your arms and legs to keep your head above the surface so you can breathe, but you're not touching any floaties or the floor or the wall and your head does not go under. This is really, really important because when you have a tail on, you lose a lot of your kick. So in order to get your head above the water to take a breath and live, you have to be able to use your arms. Third, you need to know how to do a dolphin kick fairly well. You can do that without a monofin. You can try it with just plain flippers. Um, when you're dolphin kicking, you're going to be waving your body kind of like a dolphin moves in the water. Um, I have some videos showing you how to do that on my TikTok and YouTube channels under Mermaid School. After you're able to dolphin kick, you can add just your monofin. You practice swimming with just the monofin, and once you get the hang of it, you can go ahead and add your tail skin. If you can't do all of these things, please do not put a tail on. I have seen so many videos of children who think that it's fun to be a mermaid, which it is, but they don't know how to swim very well yet, and they almost drowned. We don't want that to happen to you. So you have to be a proficient swimmer and pass the mermaid test before trying out a monofin and or a tail. So you want to start off with a beginner tail, like I showed you the Fin Fun Monofin and the Fin Fun Tail Skins are a great place to start. They are made for beginners. They're very light, they're very easy to use. A question I get a lot is how much do these things cost? It is a very expensive job slash hobby to get into because the equipment's expensive. So you can wear whatever bathing suit you want, but when it comes to tails, your monofins are going to run 50 to $60 for a starter monofin, maybe slightly less for the kid ones. They might be like 30. Um, and your tail skins are going to run between 60 and $100 for a starter tail. So it just depends where you get them. Again, FinFun is a little bit cheaper, which is great. 
So you might be wondering, how on earth do I make money from this? There are a couple of ways that you can do that. The first is I create videos on platforms like TikTok and YouTube, and the platforms actually pay me for my videos and the work that I do. But the best way to make money is to partner with companies and you can promote their products and they'll pay you usually a couple hundred dollars a video in order to um, say, hey, this is a great product, you should try it. So that's pretty cool. I have partnered with um, Sweet Bee Crown Company, so that's super fun. I have so many of their crowns, they're really pretty. Um, I've partnered with Lilac Street Eyelashes, which actually last really great underwater, so it's perfect for mermaiding. I've done like DIY fingernails, I've done a drone, <laughs> purple toothpaste, like basically whatever kind of fits in with your content, you can choose to partner with those people once you get enough followers. I also get paid for doing live gigs as a mermaid. So some of the mermaids I know do birthday parties and they'll come swim around in a pool for a party. Or I often do little beach babes in downtown Tarpon. I do characters there. So I've done mermaid there a couple times. Um, I've done human Ariel and mermaid Ariel. And I also do princesses there. So I have a whole closet full of princess dresses on top of all this mermaid stuff. So it is actually a lot of fun. You get to use your creativity, your acting skills. And basically when you are a content creator, you are writing the script so you're deciding what to say and you are filming it you are editing it you're adding music you're adding words and it is quite a process um, a lot of times in Hollywood they have a different person for each of those things like granted those movies are longer mine are a little shorter but it's still a lot that goes into it so all of the ideas for videos that I come up with I jot down in this notebook because obviously you can't film them all at once I have ideas upon ideas upon ideas and I usually cross them off once I I'm done so I don't forget anything. I usually keep a sticky note on top, like the ones I wanna do right away, and then the ones that I could save for maybe a later date, I write in my journal. I also use my journal to script out like little skits. So I do mermaiding and princess and Disney characters, but I also do like funny skits because those always seem to trend the best means they get more views than other things. So I use this to write my scripts out and um, as I film them, I'll film one character first so I don't have to change costumes a bajillion times. So all of my lines in one character and then all of my lines in the second character and then I just edit it so that it goes back and forth so it looks like they're having a conversation. Which is kind of great because you don't always have to memorize like a whole chunk of lines but also a little bit tricky because when you're acting on stage, which I have done before, um, you're kind of feeding off the other actors and you are the only actor so you just have to look at the lines and like pretend to react so it's a little bit tricky okay i think we have a couple minutes left so i am going to show you a few of my videos i'm going to do some of my mermaid ones but also some of my skits because those are also really popular and fun and at the end your teacher should have a handout for you if you are at my son's school. If you are watching this at a different school, um, you can check me out on social media at Queen Ariel of the Realm, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. I do best on YouTube and TikTok for some reason, I think because they're video sharing platforms. But I am out there. I have lots of mermaid video tutorials, um, ideas, how I film underwater. So any questions you have about that, check out my mermaid school tab and it will give you instructions on how to take care of your wigs, um, how to swim underwater with a camera and all that fun stuff. your pool. Huh? I don't see anything. Look over there by the slide. What in the hearty har har is that? I don't know, but it's coming this way. Jeez, ah! ah! what's all the commotion? You're a, 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 a mermaid? Yeah, but mermaids aren't real. Oh really? Then what do you call this? We always thought mermaids were a myth. Well, we're not, but I do think I'm lost. The storm last night must have blown me into your pool. Yeah, it must have. How else would you get in here? I have no idea how to get you out, though. Oh, I can get myself out. I just need you to show me the way back to the sea. Oh, that's easy. It's right over there. Fantastic. 
Thanks, girls. Maybe we can hang out sometime. That would be awesome. Or as us mermaids say, Jawsome. Yeah, Jawsome. Okay, well, call me on my shell if you want to chill. We will. Wait a second, what's your name? Aquamarine. Cool. Bye, Aquamarine. See you soon. Bye. being at the seaside that relaxes your soul. The warmth of the sun on your face, the soft sound of the waves as they break along the shoreline, the smell of the salty air, it just makes me feel like I'm home. Oh, oh, uh, there she goes. You scared her away. Sebastian, if you had just seen it up there, the ship rode on the wind and they filled the sky with fire. Okay, okay. for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye!